the sea. It is the home of innumerable forms of life. Through the years of human history, man has learned to use its resources for his survival. The sea, on the other hand, has always been generous to man. And since time immemorial, this vast body of water has served mankind. And so, through the ages, there evolved a strong and binding relationship between man and the sea. Today, man continues to exploit the marine waters for its many useful resources. From the array of aquatic products that man gathers from the sea, shrimp is considered one of the most valuable. Among the various kinds of shrimp, the tiger shrimp, known scientifically as Peneus monodon, is the most important in the Indo-Pacific region. Because of its delicious taste and high nutritive value, the tiger shrimp is very much in demand. People of all ages and all walks of life enjoy eating it. Aside from the regional market demand, people in countries as far away as Japan and America also relish this animal. Thus, annually, thousands of tons of shrimp are shipped to these countries. Because of this constant demand, the seas have been heavily exploited for shrimps. Until the last few years, the seas were able to provide most of the shrimp that man needed. However, because of heavy fishing, the natural stocks of tiger shrimp declined. Alternative measures to increase shrimp production have to be sought. One of these is to farm them in farmers for rearing purposes. The fry of Peneus monodon can also be produced from hatcheries. The mother prawns or spawners are obtained from the sea or reared in ponds. They are then made to lay their eggs in special tanks. By carefully nursing the larvae, a hatchery can produce millions of fry every year. In many ways, Hatcheries have reduced the problem of fry supply. Now, fish farmers do not have to rely exclusively on the wild for their fry requirement. Also, hatcheries are now capable of producing shrimp fry any time of the year. The first step in starting a shrimp farm is the choice of an appropriate site. Mangrove swamplands make the best shrimp ponds. This is because they are usually the natural habitat of the tiger shrimp. However, other coastal lowlands may also be used. The availability of shrimp fry in or near the area to be developed is a good indication that the site is suitable. 
To put up a shrimp farm, it is best to consult the nearest fisheries office for information. The local fisheries extension officer will help determine if the proposed site is suitable. The officer concerned would have many useful ideas on the choice of site and pond design, besides having some experience in approaching relevant agencies for financial aid. Several environmental conditions must be present if successful shrimp culture is to be carried out. The water quality of the proposed site must be suitable for the nursing of the shrimps. The preferred water salinity is between 15 and 28 parts per thousand. Water temperature between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius. pH between 7 and 8.5. There should be sufficient dissolved oxygen in the water, which most importantly should be free from industrial and agricultural pollution. The site should be able to make use of tidal energy for renewal of water through supply and drainage canal. The foundation soil should be able to retain water, preferably loamy clay with a sand content not exceeding 60%. If the site meets all the necessary conditions, then it can be considered suitable for shrimp farming. The next step would be to design the layout of the ponds. It is important that a proper layout is adopted, closely correlated with the features unique to the site chosen. To be considered are the topography of the site, the tidal range, the strength of currents and waves, and the nature of the soil used in diking. All these factors would determine the ability of the ponds to be flushed regularly by tidal flows and to provide optimal living conditions for the cultured shrimp. A proper design should have good, compacted dikes, proper inlet and outlet gates, as well as supply and drainage canals. The actual construction of the pond will begin by marking off the area to be dug. This is done by planting bamboo sticks on the edges of the proposed pond site. The digging then starts. Normally, excavation is carried out manually by hired laborers. The water depth in the pond should be maintained at about 75 to 100 centimeters, while the total pond depth, including the required allowance or freeboard, should be about 1.2 to 1.5 meters. The bottom should be flat and sloping gently toward the outlet. This makes harvesting much easier. Since tiger shrimp have a tendency to burrow, the pond bottom should not be compacted but left loose and soft. Debris like twigs, sticks and stones should be removed. The presence of sticks and twigs in particular can hinder netting operations. For new ponds, it is important to flush them with seawater several times. This is to remove acids that may have formed in the soil during the digging. The flushing should be carried out till the pH of the water is about 7 if it is acid sulfate soil. A means of maintaining the proper pH level is by liming. The process reduces acidity in the ponds caused by deterioration of organic matter by combining with acidic elements and converting these to harmless substances. Also, lime acts as a disinfectant, destroying disease-causing organisms that may be present in the ponds. Generally, the lime is broadcast evenly on the pond bottom and on the slope of the dikes to ensure maximum efficiency.